Hey guys, this is Goofer King Science, and today I'm going to be showing you this digital Geiger counter that I built. If you've been following my channel for a while now, you'll know that a couple of years ago I built a Geiger counter. However, that Geiger counter was really simple, and all it did was make a clicking noise whenever radiation was detected. This one actually uses an Arduino and an LCD to display how much radiation has been detected. So first I'm going to give you a basic rundown of how this circuit functions, and then we'll actually move on to some testing. So if you have any experience with Geiger counters, you'll know that Geiger tubes need to have a high voltage to function. In order to generate this high voltage, I have my power supply powering a small camera flash circuit. This is really easy to get. All you need to do is get one of those old disposable cameras and take the flash circuit out of it. With the input voltage that I've selected, the output is around 400 volts, and that's perfect for running this SBT-10 Geiger tube. This is a pancake style Geiger tube, and it has a mica window that is extremely thin. This allows it to detect really weak radiation like alpha. This is a really interesting Geiger tube, and it actually has multiple Geiger tubes within it. That's what this whole resistor network is for. Each resistor limits the amount of current that's allowed to go through the Geiger tube, and this way it doesn't burn itself out. If I take the output here of the Geiger tube and look at it on the oscilloscope, you can see that whenever radiation is detected, there is a very sharp downward spike of voltage. This voltage spike is really messy, and it's impossible for it to be directly used by the Arduino. That's why I have this 555 circuit running in monostable mode. Each time a voltage spike is detected, it outputs a very clean digital signal. Let's check out its output on the oscilloscope. Here we go. You can see that each of those downward voltage spikes has now been turned into a very clean 5 volt signal, each pulse being about 1 millisecond in length. So this is the program that the Arduino is running on. It took me quite a while to write all this, and I went through multiple different revisions in order to get to this final product. It's still probably not 100% bug-free, however, I'm no expert in Arduino programming, and I'm pretty happy with the way it works. These first lines up here at the top just include the LCD library, and they set up the pins that are going to be used for the LCD. Next, I just declare which pins are going to be used for the Geiger input, the output to the speaker, the LED, and the pin for changing modes. Next, I create some variables that are used for storing which mode we're currently in, the total number of counts, and some values that are used for debouncing the push buttons. In the setup area, I just start the LCD, define which pins are input and output, as well as attach an interrupt for the input from the Geiger counter. Down here in the loop, it runs either mode 1 or mode 2, depending on whether or not the push button for switching modes has been pressed or not. It also debounces the input from the push button. In mode 1, there is a running average of the total number of counts since the last reset, and this is displayed as counts per minute as well as a dosage. In mode 2, the total number of counts since the last reset is displayed as well as the time elapsed since the last reset. Down here at the bottom is the code that is run each time a pulse from the Geiger tube is detected. It adds 1 to the counts variable, it creates a tone on the speaker, and flashes the LED for 1 millisecond. So back in real life you can see the two push buttons. This first one resets the system, and this one changes the mode. If I press it you can see that the total number of counts since the last reset is displayed as well as the time elapsed. And in the other mode, counts per minute is displayed, as well as a dosage. But this dosage is wrong because it was configured to a different Geiger tube. Now, if I have a radioactive sample near the tube and we roll over a thousand counts, it is displayed as a decimal with a K after it, instead of a very long number. Now here I'm just demonstrating the reset. When I press it, everything goes back to zero. Now let's actually take a look at some radioactive samples. Now I forgot to record the background as a control, but just take my word for it that it's normally around 100 counts per minute with this tube. Here I have a small piece of granite, which is actually reasonably radioactive. After letting this sample average for a little while, we can see that it settled out to around 198 to 200, which is about 100 counts over the background. Here's a small tritium keychain that I have. And when it averages, it, it looks like it's about 230 counts per minute, or 130 above background. 
This is a jar of potassium perchlorate, and the radioactive potassium in it actually brings the Geiger tube up to around 370 counts per minute, or 270 above background. Next, I have a small sample of americium from a smoke detector, and this is actually mainly an alpha emitter, so it takes a very small distance between the sample and the tube to actually get a pretty high reading. I put this sample almost right on top of the Geiger tube, and you can see that we've jumped up to about 5,300 counts per minute, or 5,200 above background. Now for the finale, here's my sample of uranium-238 from United Nuclear. Now I'm trying to work pretty fast here to minimize my exposure to this sample, and you can hear just how much radiation this thing puts off. It sounds kind of scary, but the amount of dose that's actually being applied to my body is relatively small when compared to something like a chest x-ray. Look at that, we're up to about 46,000 counts per minute. So I think that's enough exposure for one day, I'm going to go ahead and put away this uranium. And just to show you my precautions that I take with this, I go ahead and wrap it in a lead blanket to protect myself from the radiation while transporting it out to the garage. And once it's in the garage, it stays behind a thick lead plate. When it's wrapped in this radiation blanket, you can hear that basically no radiation is getting through. It's always best to err on the side of caution when working with radiation. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this experiment, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.